My therapist told me to buy you a punching bag. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, you know, I said, what, what can I do to help my kids? And she said, go buy a punching bag. That'd be a real good, very healthy way for a guy your age to get out your anger, hurt, etc. Remember, this is what we call pre-puberty. It's not a good time to get this kind of news. And there's no good time, but this really wasn't a good time. So she told me to go buy a punching bag, and I did. I bought it, and I hung it in the garage, and you never used it. Hysterical. Caitlin, he would call, and if he heard my voice on the other line, he would hang up. And you could hear that sound, that silent crackling sound you hear when you know that someone's there, and I'd say hello, and he wouldn't say anything, and he would hang up. And then he'd call back, and I'd let it ring and say, girls, your father's on the phone. Oh, no, no, we, we didn't fight about that. You know, you and Ethan always went together. I mean, there, there, there was never any argument about who was going to get who at Christmas time or who was going to get who at Thanksgiving. You know, your father would call politely and say, can the children go with me? You know, we've always been like that. If you want the kids, go ahead. You have them. <laughs> there were... 400 comic books that had to go back and forth every week. <laughs> it was a logistical problem. It, it was just a pain. It was like, oh, we gotta get Matthew and his knapsack and whatever, and you know, from, from Dunstable Road to Huron Avenue, and oh God, here come the comic books. I can put them in the in the back seat. But I mean, it, it kind of perfectly illustrates the whole thing because it never would have occurred to John and I that you shouldn't be allowed to take your comic books back and forth. I mean, of course, clearly it would be easier for you, Max, if you left some in one place and some in another, and you said, absolutely not, you know, we caved. <laughs>